Hello everyone, I'm Fodoris and I'm from Athens University of Economics and Business. I'm going to present our work for detecting faults in uh, puppet programs. This joint work with Dimitris Mitrovoulos and Professor Diomidis Pinellis. To begin with, Puppet is one of the most popular configuration management tools and is widely used by many organizations. It enables administrators to set up their computer systems in a de declarative manner through its domain-specific language. Here, for example, you can, you can see a simple Puppet program that boots the Apache service. This program consists of three resources and the resource in Puppet is a unit that abstracts the state of, of, a, of a resource in the system. Uh, the Puppet code is organized in files called manifest and Puppet collects those files and translates them into catalogs, which are the input of the Puppet execution engine. In this example, Puppet is free to schedule resources in any execution order. So, depending on the execution plan followed by Puppet, we might get a crash or we might get a subtle error, for example, when Puppet starts the service before specifying the contents of its configuration file. To fix those ordering violations, developers need to explicitly specify ordering constraints between dependent resources. Now, another important feature of Puppet is called notification. A Puppet resource can notify another resource whenever the form is updated. Notifications are very useful for services. For example, when a configuration file is updated, the services that depend on that file need to restart to get the updated configuration. Failing to do so can seriously degrade the reliability of services. For example, a uh, missing notifier in the GitHub's Puppet code base led to a chain of failures that caused a 42 minute downtime. Again, to fix those problems, developers need to explicitly provide the notify parameter in the specification of resources. Note here that notify also uh, imply happens before relationships relations between resources. So in this example, uh, the packets and the file resources are executed before the service resource. To detect uh, missing notifiers and ordering violations, we propose a dynamic analysis whose uh, big picture is shown in the diagram. Let's briefly discuss each step in detail. The input of our approach is a puppet manifest that we want to analyze. The executor applies the keypad the given puppet manifest in the system, monitors its execution, and collects its system call trace. The executor also uh, stores the compiled catalog of, of the program for later use, as we will discuss later. On the right, you can uh, see a faulty puppet program uh, that we're going to use as a reference for the rest of the presentation. This program manifests a missing notifier from file to service. The next step is the analysis of the trace produced by the first step. Uh, the, the analyzer uh, first translates the trace into a formal model that allows us to compute the interactions of every puppet resource with the file system. To do so, uh, we provide a semantics for that formal model and we split the trace into blocks corresponding to the execution banners of every puppet resource. Here is a small fragment uh, of the system called trace stemming from the execution of our exam program. To get the high-level idea of how the analyzer works, it first identifies the points, for example, the points where uh, the execution uh, of the file resource begins and ends. Since the execution of a puppet resource does not interleave with the execution of another, or, or another resource, we presume that, that the system calls between those points correspond to the execution of the file resource. We do the same for the service resource and through well-defined semantics, we know how and where uh, each file is accessed. For example, the configuration file is produced by the execution of the file resource while it's consumed from, by the execution of the service resource. Having computed those file accesses, the analyzer now infers relationships between uh, puppet resources. We have two kinds of relationships. No, ordering relationships, and notification relationships. Back to our example, by exploiting the file access on the top and the inference rules on the left, the analyzer infers two relations. The first relationship says that the execution of the file resource uh, precedes the execution of the service resource while uh, the file resource notifies uh, the service resource. The final step of our approach is fault detection. 
the first step of fault detector is to build the dependent graph of the given puppet program by examining the compiled catalog produced by the first step of, by the first step of our approach. Uh, note that this dependency graph contains all of the notification relationships that actually appear uh, in the program. That is, they have been explicitly declared by the developers. Here is the example, uh, depend, here is the dependency graph of our example program. Now, the second step of fault detector is to verify whether each relation inferred previously by the trace analyzer holds with regards to the holds with regards to the dependency graph. Back to our example, and through an algorithm which is uh, described in detail in our paper that examines the reachability relation between the nodes in the dependency graph, the fault detector knows that the first relation. Uh, the first uh, relationship holds while the second one does not. So it reports a missing notifier from file to service. Let's proceed to the evaluation. We analyzed 354 Puppet modules taken from, four, which, from Forge, which is the official repository for uploading Puppet modules. We applied each module in a fresh Debian environment through Docker containers. Our approach detected 92 previously unknown issues in 33 Puppet modules, and the majority of them have been fixed by the developers. We also categorized the detected uh, faults into various patterns. Uh, and let me briefly discuss one uh, fault pattern, which is one of my personal favorites, and it's related to a missing notifier from log files to services. When the service started, it creates a file descriptor that points to the uh, underlying log file. Uh, if this file is removed from the file system and we run Puppet again, it, Puppet will create uh, a new file. But the problem here is that the service still has a file descriptor that points to the initial file. The initial file now has become an orphan and it cannot be accessed through a file, through a file file. So we have a data loss here. The server needs to restart to open the freshly created uh, log file. Regarding performance for uh, collecting traces, our approach slow down Puppet by almost a factor of two. The trace analysis and fault detection take two seconds on average, while the time spent on trace analysis is linear to the size of traces. To conclude, we introduce an effective and practical approach for detecting ordering violation and missing notifiers in Puppet programs. We do believe that our approach could be part of the testing process for Puppet programs due to its effectiveness uh, and efficiency. Thank you for listening.